Hi friends, this is Andrea with you today. We are celebrating International Scrapbook Day with the Simple Stories team today. So make sure there is an Instagram hop going on. I will have all the details in the description box below on who is the next person that you should go and check out on Instagram. Now, when I posted this project, this tote bag, um, crafting tote bag project a few weeks ago using the Simple Stories Let's Get Crafty collection, many of you asked me for a process video. As I said, this, is, this a is a cut file that I personally purchased from Ida Martinez. She is I'm Created to Create on Instagram. I will have her information below as well as the link to the cut file. Now, once you download your cut file, you will end up with the basic pieces I have here. To create the layers um, on the the first piece that has the handles, that piece a little bit smaller. So apart from that, you end up with the basic pieces. Now you can see me manually creating more layers to, to this. I believe, I am not sure if for some reason I skipped those pieces uh, as part of the cut file. You can definitely check before you purchase it, but if you don't mind doing it manually, I am just showing you exactly how I did it. Super easy, it's basic, really basic shapes that we're working with here. Now I'm adding, I also added machine stitching details along the edges of the layers, not the basic main pieces that we'll, that we'll use to put the box together. So for that, I am using the Simple Stories cardstock. I did not have enough of the same yellow tone that actually matches these Say Cheese at the Park collection, which by the way, I haven't even talked about. I am using the brand new and amazing, colorful, happy Say Cheese at the Park collection. So I am using the main one. You know, if you have seen the um, the posts and all of the launches from the collections, you know that there are four separate smaller collections that have all of the specific details and embellishments from each one of the lands of the park. But this is, I'm using the same one and we got sidetracked here, but I really needed to talk about the collection. Now, I put my three first pieces together. So the bottom of the box and the sides, the long sides of the box that will have the handles. We're now working on the sides. When I did, when I put together my first box, I also added the the layers on the outside of the box and the inside of the box. And I realized this time that I needed to actually put the entire box together before you work on at least on the inner pieces. of the box and that is because of this flaps right here so that way when we put the inner panels in the box we are covering those, those tiny flaps you can use and you can cover the if you're doing the inner layers layers also for the sides it, you can do those prior to assembling the box one important thing these inner pieces are not necessary. If you are creating your box using not cardstock but pattern paper, for example, you will already have a pattern on the on the other side. Now I do like to use cardstock and I love the Simple Stories cardstock because you get to, it's like you get, it's like having a pattern paper. You have a completely solid side of the paper and then you have the side with the dots that in this case works perfectly as a pattern. But 
there's another reason for adding these inner panels and it's that you will definitely get a super sturdy box that you can actually carry and you can actually have I'm not gonna say super heavy things that you can add super heavy things inside the box but you can definitely add in, in my case I had a mini album on the first box that I made now this one I'm gonna do oh one thing here you saw me using liquid glue for the inside panels and now I'm gonna use double-sided tape for the outside ones the reason being when you are doing the inner panels you can you'll see me here using my bone folder to add pressure and to make sure that everything sticks in place but until that I have the opportunity to move around my piece if I don't get it exactly where I want it now the double-sided tape will not allow me to play around if I don't stick the piece correctly but I will not need to add any pressure to my surface which is in this case what I want because now I'm working with the outside panels now you can definitely add those outside the those layers before you actually put the box together I think I was so afraid because I messed up the first time I did it. I just didn't want anything to happen. But again, just to backtrack, outside layers, you're more than welcome to stick to add to your cardstock or the paper that you're using for your base before you put your box together, before you assemble it. Now the inside panels, better to do after it's all done. Now I'm also adding another layer to these pieces and these pieces are the side pockets of the of the tote bag. So they come with, you get them also with your cut file, there's nothing that you need to change about them. Yeah, you just need to fold them and I am adding double-sided tape on the bottom edge to make sure that when I, when I fold those pieces as an accordion, they actually, the bottom of them stay together. So nothing happens when I add that to my box and I wanna actually play with them or I keep adding stuff to the sides that it actually works. So we are creating, let's remember, we're creating something that looks amazing and beautiful and it's you're you're just gonna want to create more and more of this and just give them to your friends or get together and create your own teach your friends how to create them put them together for them but you want to make sure that it doesn't only look good but it's actually functional so that is why I'm making sure that it's sturdy it will actually hold some weight and that all the pockets will open and close but will last forever <laughs> All right, we have the first one ready, just making sure that everything stays in place. Done with one side and we'll just repeat the process with the second one. Almost ready 
and it is now time here there is another change that I made to this this box compared to even the first one that was already changed a little bit so when you get your cut file these are the shapes that you're gonna get now when Ida designed her box and you will have the link to her YouTube video as well on the description box below you'll see that she created an amazing a closing mechanism for for this for her box so she didn't want to have to use velcro or anything any kind of adhesive so she created an amazing mechanism now I wanted to keep my box simple so for the first one I have the pockets which are the pieces that you can see here which are these pieces with the yellow pattern paper also from the say cheese at the park collection and and then the second piece I am gonna show you how I did it and how I added it to the first box but I'm not going to do the same thing here my three pockets the big one and the two smaller ones are gonna stay open these box um, again for me it's gonna be functional I still have not decided if I'm gonna keep it for myself or I have a few people in mind <laughs> that this box can go to. But being a, or having this th specific theme, I wanted this again to be functional or to, to actually work for what I wanted it. So I did not want, you'll see what I'm gonna end up adding on the front pocket, on the big pocket, and the smaller pockets are gonna have just smaller embellishments. So we are gonna keep them open. I wasn't even, and, and that's the thing, I wasn't even planning on leaving them like that. But the moment I added that piece, it was automatic. I just said, you know what? There, there, there's no need to create a flap. No need, we can definitely skip that step. I will be showing you the basics of how I created them, but if you don't want, here's an example of how it would look like. Now, as I said, I was determined to just replicate what I did in the beginning with the first box because I simply love it. But no, there's no need. I just decided to keep it the way it was. One other thing, and I am just remembering I as I'm you know, recording the voiceover. Some of you have also asked for a tutorial to the mini album that I made that goes inside the Let's Get Crafty tote bag. Now the video was gonna be, this is already pretty long. And so what I'll be doing is later on, I will be recreating the album, kind of like the same thing as this, the same, the same, same, but different, right? So the basics will be the same, will follow the same, the same base, the same steps. And then if I do any variations, I will just let you know what those are and I'll show you the difference. So, go. Oh, our box is done. And guess what? I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> I don't think I needed to add anything else. But now, here is the original flap piece as it comes when you get it from your cut file. If you are pretty good, eh, if you know how to work with the software pretty well and you can modify those pieces, on the computer before you cut them that's fine if not just make sure that you cut it with you know a piece of scrap or a paper cardstock that you're not going to use and then you just use that piece as a template that's what i did the first time and then use your bone folder to 
create that flap. I will, when you cut that piece, if I, I'm just showing you that if I would have done it, I would have used the other black paper. I feel that there was already enough pattern going on here. But basically, that's it. I did cut that flap a little bit longer, the one that goes inside the pocket, not the outside, not the one you fold that goes on the front, just so you get that paper as the background of your pocket. And now it's just a matter of decorating. Just added a few embellishments. This is a sticker half face silhouette from the sticker book. We're gonna use a heart sticker on that same pocket. A few more details, and then I'm just gonna show you a few of the things that you can fit in your bag. As of now, I'm using it just to add bits and pieces that I want to, in photos and other embellishments that I want to use and wanna keep safe and some photos that I wanna keep safe and start gathering and have them in place for whenever I'm ready to create a either the mini album that will go inside this bag or a different mini album and I can keep this bag, I can use this bag just to hold stuff or to hold all the pictures that I wanna bring. Just showing you kind of like all of the things that you can keep in there. You have your maps, you have photos, half your keys so you can see maps photos I'm keeping on the front same with all of these things that I fussy cut from maps you can see keys go in the front pocket I think it's just amazing I love how this project how this one turned out wow. but using a different collection making it a different theme it's made for a different purpose it, so it even though it's the same it already feels different and as I said we change the pockets you can I will leave you with some close-up pictures so I hope this works I know that many of you did ask it is a cut file that I purchased but by putting it together and I wouldn't want to um, I think I mentioned this to a couple of ladies, I wouldn't want to just create my own pattern exactly the same or really based on this one since it is not my original idea. Our weekend with this that will be out there. This was Andrea for Simple Stories. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.